Good morning, class. <laughs> so, we'll, um, today we'll learn how to calculate confidence intervals and margins of error, and we'll have a quiz at the end, so pay attention. Sorry, I'm just kidding. Um, this was our, this is our, our previous chair, <laughs> Simil, um, but this is really the story of ocean accounts, and it starts with the story of, of official statistics, official statisticians, statistical standards, and the ocean. So official statistics include statistical offices, but also all people in government and institutions that are creating official statistics. And how many people here are, are official statisticians, either in the statistics office or related office creating statistics? So how many people here? Okay, so pay attention. You can ask them lots of questions. So when it comes to ocean accounts, we're not just making this up. So what we have in our concept note in the issue briefs, it really builds on a history of official statistics. So when, when I visit a statistical office, it's like going onto a construction site. I know what everybody does. It's like there are, there are carpenters, and you know what they do, and there are, there are electricians and plumbers, and you know what they do, and whether it's Statistics Canada or Fiji Bureau of Statistics, we have, a, we have kind of an understanding of what, what everybody does. And I've been to over 40 statistics offices so far. The reason we can do this and everybody can, is that we're all working to the same manuals. And these are our international standards. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But we're working on something very complex from beginning to end, from data collection to data production. It's a complex, complex process, takes many people. And like I said, we need the manuals to help us do this. We need a blueprint. So like a, like a building, a statistical operation can be small or large. We also need architects to develop that blueprint. And in statistics, that blueprint is our standards, our classifications, methods, and our ways of working. So these not too excited looking people are the architects. This is the United Nations Statistical Commission. They meet every year. Um, UN member states, but also international organizations like the OECD, uh, participate, they agree on the standards and the methods, the classifications and concepts. They strongly adhere to what we call the key principles of official statistics or the fundamental principles that, that guide us in, in being relevant and professional, impartial, um, confidential, but the most important one that we're talking about here is this use of international standards. So these fundamental principles are, are so important that in, in Canada, two of our chief statisticians uh, resigned because the government wouldn't create conditions where they could adhere to the fundamental principles. The chief statistician of Greece uh, is still in trouble, still being pursued by, by, by others in the, in the Greek government because he revealed where the undercounting or the misrepresentation of the Greek debt was into the, related to the Greek debt crisis. So I'll talk a little bit more about the, the uh, Statistical Commission later. But this is an intriguing book. You notice in the, in the subtitle it says, Can Accountants Save the Planet? So there is some vision out there that bringing people together, involving the statisticians, the accountants, can help you, as, uh, as, as Hongju was saying, measuring your natural capital measure the, not only the blue economy, but many other aspects of, of the, the ocean. So in 1946, sorry, 1953, the System of National Accounts was a 46-page was a manual. This was developed. They needed System of National Accounts to deal with the post-war reconstruction of national economies. So in 1953, the manual was 46 pages. So it was the main blueprint for, for 20 years for countries to work with on how to measure their economy. And by 
2008, it got a bit more complex, only 740, 722 pages. And these are, these are blueprints. They're not the data, they're not the numbers. They're simply the instructions on how to build this complex system. I won't go into detail on this, but Bimlesh can correct me and can give you all kinds of more detail. But the idea is that GDP is a combination of components. And GDP is an important number. Um, Donald Trump got some leverage out of announcing a, an increase in GDP over the last quarter, and it's a big thing. It takes groups of people to calculate each one of these components to know how much consumers are spending. We need household surveys to know how much business is spending, we need business surveys. For household surveys, we need population registers and censuses. For business, for business surveys, we need a business register. Spending by government, do they keep track of what they're spending? And need to keep track of all the imports and exports, which we get from customs and, and other places. So it's really not that simple. And like I said, Bimlish can give you all the details on how to calculate this. Um, but it's not a number that somebody calculates in an afternoon. Uh, in the bigger countries, it takes thousands of people. At last count, Statistics Canada was 1,800 people running the surveys, maintaining the registers, compiling the numbers, getting data from all different sources. And I'm not sure how many it takes in Fiji, Bimlesh, but, but 20 in Fiji. Still a good number. It's a, the group's under Bimlesh. But I consider this accounting, taking multiple sources, um, fitting them into a structure as, as big statistics. We talk about big data, big science, but this is really big statistics. It's bringing lots of different things together. So a little bit on the system of environmental economic accounting. It's really closely related to the system of national accounts, but measures things in physical terms. System of national accounts measures everything in prices, but we realize that the, the economy exists within an environment. And this 722-page manual, the SNA 2008, says if you want to know about natural inputs to the economy, look to the SIA. So the SIA is the only other international statistical standard other than the system of national accounts. It's only 350 pages. The, the SIA itself is being implemented, in, at least in part, by over 60 countries. We heard about Fiji, maybe we'll hear some of your experiences. And most of the um, international organizations and statistical offices, they know what the SIA is, even if they haven't implemented it. So it does a few things that the system of national accounts doesn't do. It accounts for all of the, the stocks of the natural inputs. So these are our assets. How much is there? How much water do we have? How much land do we have? How, many, how much minerals and energy? I've added ecosystems to that. What are our ecosystem types? And, and for how those stocks flow into the economy. Again, who takes them out? Who supplies them? Who uses them? And in the end, we get, we get residuals. We get the pollutants and the CO2 and the things that we don't really want and try to recycle. And then we keep track of the expenditures. And a lot of this data for these accounts can be derived from existing statistics. Or in some instances, we run surveys to fill in some blanks. You don't need all of the parts to these accounts to make them useful. We can implement one or two of them in a country and can already advise policy. Some of them are pilots, they're experiments that the country has done to just see if they could put the data together. Some countries have taken it much further, have uh, made those accounts official statistics. And you can do some interesting analyses uh, with, the, um, with, the, with the assets. You can calculate things like the resource life, the, um, with the, with, with the, 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 calculate the costs and benefits. You can get more realistic indicators of economic performance. But the CS Central Frame, this is largely the CS Central Framework. It accounts for the 
natural inputs to the economy as individual commodities. It usually focuses on national level statistics, so you create, have one number for the total amount of water, or total amount of water abstracted by one economic unit or another. And it doesn't include all of the things that we think of ecosystem services where all of these living and non-living units work together to provide us with these services. We'll have a detailed discussion on ecosystem services later. So to the rescue, um, this is another <laughs> meeting in, in 2011. Um, three of us were there, uh, Daniel and Mark and I were, were there, part of that team that started the SIA Ecosystems. And many of these people are still active, and we had a, an expert workshop in, uh, in New York uh, in late June. And there are many, many more people who are interested in using this um, statistical framework for measuring ecosystems and their services. So the SIA Ecosystems uses spatial detail. They're, 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 it involves maps for the most part and considers ecosystems as living and non-living components of the environment working together. There's a reason for the elephant. So when I presented this in, in South Africa a few years ago, I said, well, we have all these components. We measure the extent of the ecosystem, the condition of the ecosystem, the services that they supply, who uses those services, and we can measure all of these things in physical terms. And we also have some additional accounts that make sense on their own, but also feed into the measure of, of condition. We've developed some tools, the classification, spatial units, scaling, aggregation, biophysical modeling, and what many people are interested in, the, the valuation techniques. So you can take these physical flows of services, um, like water and crops and soil retention and cultural services, you can, you can take these and put a dollar value on some of them if you're careful, and you can develop monetary indicators, dollar values. And we can take all these and we can calculate the, the, the value of individual assets depending on different scenarios and how those assets are to be used, and we can link this in with our old friend, the system of national accounts, and, and adjust it for depletion and degradation that, like I said, have a more realistic picture of the, the economy. So the reason that it's an elephant, that when I presented this in South Africa, one of the participants said, well, what does the animal look like? So I came up with this diagram and said, well, it looks like an elephant. So the SIA ecosystems has been applied um, over the last six, five, six years in different places. Um, Canada, the, this is the Netherlands, uh, the, the, the Canadian group has, has, has done ecosystem accounting in, uh, for Canada, a good publication in 2013. So it's very spatial, spatially oriented, but in the end you still need a, a table. So this is a table of SIA ecosystem types and SIA ecosystem services, and the researchers have gone out and measured the physical amounts of those services that people use. So most of the early work was done on terrestrial and freshwater, even though at Statistics Canada we did some, some work on oceans. Anybody volunteer any ideas why, why this all works for why all the early work was for terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems. We want to volunteer uh, an idea. Boundaries are easier. That's one. Anyway. The data, that, those are all the the reasons we came up with for, for, for developing ocean accounts. So they're a different kind of ecosystem. Um, the ocean's very large. The water keeps on moving. Um, it's multi-layer, so things happen at different levels that don't necessarily affect each other very much. 
Um, if you remember Finding Nemo, the sharks were going one direction, the turtles in the other direction, and Nemo was going from one stream to the other. Um, different things are happening. It all looks the same from a satellite. Uh, satellites can only see to a depth of about 15 meters, the, the radar satellites. Transboundaries shared. Uh, most of them are outside of national jurisdictions. They're less studied, less well known. We really don't have a lot of data, and it hasn't really been tested for the SIA. So our friends back at the UN Statistical Commission gave ESCAP the, um, the role of developing this technical guidance for, for ocean accounts. And it's part of the, it had been part of the ongoing SEA agenda for, for a long time. And uh, Mark and, uh, sorry, Anthony and Francois and a few of us were at the Ecosystem Forum of Experts who were quite enthusiastic about um, using this work. And we've got a lot of other potential partners, as Ben was saying, in the room today. But it's not just us. So the, the OECD and UNESCO, uh, NOAA, other countries, they all really want to know how to measure the measure the ocean, not only for the economic part, but for the environmental and social parts. One example is the first integrated ocean assessment uh, brought together by UN Oceans, uh, said they needed a framework, something like the SIA, to help make the next version more coherent. So we have some ideas. So anybody who's been through our land accounting workshop recognizes this as, as one of the maps in the exercise. So this is a small island. And we know a lot, usually, about the land. We know where the water is, where the croplands are, where the forests are, where the cities are. And we can start building on that. We can, we can look at the, the, the coastal communities. We can look at the coastal infrastructure, the um, population pollution sources, sorry, the ocean spatial units is one of our topics of discussion. What spatial units do we actually use? We need to agree on them. One can be good for a study or another study, but to do this globally, we need to have some recommendations on where to start. We can start overlaying this with ocean ecosystem types, with uh, marine protected areas, the, the, the uses of the ocean, fishery tourism, uh, mining areas. We can start bringing together our, our quality estimates, our, our condition uh, measures, and start putting this together with some of the national statistics. So many countries have information on their effluents, on their wastewater, their emissions, their, their waste, but what we usually don't know is where those wastes are disposed. We know they're disposing of so many tons of plastic, so many meters cubed of, of wastewater, but we don't know where. Um, that's one area of sophistication we'd like to, to bring in. Um, we can look at what fish stock data country, countries have, what the supply and uses of the catch, who the beneficiaries are. That's another issue we'll be talking about, the, uh, the social dimension, who the beneficiaries are. And then we can do some interesting analyses with this. We can look at the main sources of land-based pollution. We can look at degraded and pristine hotspots. We can do cost-benefit analyses of rehabilitation and protection. We can look at the value of natural inputs to the economy, who benefits again. Look at policy options, what are the values at risk if we don't um, clean up or protect the, the ocean ecosystems. And we can look at investment versus benefits, again, of, of the, 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 in the ocean. So we're talking about a blueprint. You may have seen this in the, in the concept note. It's not, it's not blue, and it's kind, of, it's kind of complicated. But if we, if we think of this as, as the backbone of a, of a statistical system, that the statisticians can help maintain, but the statisticians don't collect this kind of data. We don't have the boats and the scuba gear and the monitoring information to, to, to go out and, and collect new data. We can help bring it together into a framework. And we also need, we also need the, 
the policy people to tell us what's important. We don't need to fill in all the blanks, but they need to say we need to do this slice, we need to do that slice because this is important to the, to the country. So this structure brings together the SIA central framework, SIA ecosystems, parts of the system of national accounts. We've added a few missing bits. So we talk about ocean assets, which is the extent account. We need to know the types of ecosystems in different places based on a framework of spatial units. We can start mapping other assets, like the fish stocks and minerals. The condition is the, the, the quality measures, other biophysical conditions, including biodiversity and carbon. Ocean services would map the physical and wherever possible the monetary supply of services and link those to the users. So over here, that's all the services supply and use. We can map the drivers of change. Some of those would come from the SIA. So the air emissions, the, the water emissions, the wastes. The SIA also guides us in, in, in measuring the, um, calls it aquatic resources, which are fish and crustaceans. And the system of national accounts already has information on the revenues and expenditures from coastal and marine related industries that could be disaggregated by small large enterprises which isn't usually done and linked to employment and who depends on those resources. <coughs> we have some opportunities to disaggregate beneficiary types. The SIA and the SIA ecosystems and the most ecosystem services work sees beneficiaries as one lump and doesn't look at high income, low income, coastal versus non-coastal, urban versus rural. It's an ongoing area of research, but that's something that's important to do. Uh, the governance component here is just something we've, we've added uh, to cover the rest of SDG 14, includes statistics on policies, regulations, institutions, expenditures. And some of these linkages are more experimental than others. The uh, ecosystem accounting um, is, is becoming more entrenched and less experimental. We can learn a lot from work that's going on there. So even though the SIA was in place before the SDGs, it can serve to support many of the targets. Um, and as Ben mentioned, we're, we're looking at the ocean beyond SDG 14. And one account can actually support many targets. So the first two columns are the actual SIA accounts, and the, the right side is the, the, the targets that uh, we can link them to. So they're also linked to food, climate change, biodiversity, and many others. How are we doing for time? Vimlesh. So just some take-home points that uh, the official statistics are based on fundamental principles and agreed standards. The system of national accounts is used by, by every country. Uh, the SIA is linked to the SNA and endorsed by all official statisticians, so your national banks will know about it. Um, ocean accounts are an extension of, and an adaptation of the SIA to the ocean and SDG 14, and the main components of that are extent, conditions, services, supply, and use, the drivers, and governance. And uh, I'd actually, so I think together we can, we can, we can save the ocean, um, but it really takes the statisticians and the policymakers and the, um, the scientists to, to work together on this. So just a, just a thought that um, Next year, we'll have a 2019 version of this that, that might be 75 pages or so. And by, actually, I would say by 2025, we would want an official document that says the, the system of ocean accounts. And we don't know how many pages are going into that. But as Ben said, everybody has an opportunity to write a few of those pages between now and 2025. Thank you.